Hello there, everybody. I'm Anaji, and this is FMV Review. So today we're going to be talking about the newest Netflix film, Concrete Cowboy. So when I originally saw the trailer for this, I thought it might be kind of interesting. I wasn't super impressed. I will say getting into this movie, just, just not holding back from y'all. I'm going to get into what I think is probably the best thing about this movie, which is the acting. Um, the acting's pretty solid. You have Idris Elba. You have Caleb uh, McLaughlin uh, from the Stranger Things fame in a more serious role. It's nice to see Netflix would do something like that for him because I'm not going to lie. I think Caleb is on at least the last two seasons of Stranger Things. I don't think they've really been giving him much to do. And don't get me wrong, they have a pretty big cast of characters, but yeah, he's not being given much to do. I definitely think he shows more range here than he does in Stranger Things. Um, but there are a couple of moments where his performance... He just kind of seems blank behind the eyes, but I don't think that's completely his fault. I think that the plot does not quite live up to the talent that they have here, and even maybe the concept that they have. Um, and I think it goes, I think, I, the, I think the thing, one of the big things that's wrong about this movie is that it has a lot of ingredients for, that should make it, you know, at least a decent movie, at least, you know, the story's a little cliche, but... It's all about execution, right? It's like how you do it. And they have a lot of pieces here that you could have made something probably even maybe great. I don't know if it had been amazing, but you could have made something great here. But it just doesn't come together, and I think it has to do with the execution. So let me, excuse me, let me get into that a little bit. Um, there's a, I would say there's a problem with all the sort of relationships in this movie. But one I want to kind of get into is that you have it where the main character ends up uh, hanging out with this previous friend that he had had uh, previously when he used to live there. But I don't really fully buy into the depth of the friendship between Caleb, I'm sorry, Cole and the character Smush. And I think the script leans heavily on the actor Jareel Jerome, who's playing Smush, to really carry, to like almost act depth into the script that isn't really there necessarily. Though I will say Jarell Jerome, good actor. I think the last time I saw him was in Moonlight, which I know what part he was in, and that was a pretty fantastic part. Um, but I think I'm going to get into, I think, what is maybe the biggest problem of this film, which is this movie has uh, emotional beats and it has a lot of good talent and relationships throughout the movie. But I think what they needed to do is they either needed to, because they have a little bit under like a two hour time run, which isn't the longest, but isn't the shortest either. But I think they either needed to cut some plot lines or they needed to find a better way to weave the plot lines together. Like you have it where there's like four pretty distinct plot lines happening from each other. And that's a lot of plot lines to be going on in a movie that's about under two hours. So I think they should have either found a way to weave those plot lines together because what ends up happening is, and this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler. So there's like four main plot lines, right? There's Cole's relationship to his dad played by Idris Elba, who as an actor, again, Idris Elba is solid here. He's actually not in the movie as much as I thought he would be. And this is, we'll go into another problem. Um, so you have the relationship between Cole and his dad, Idris Elba. You have the relationship between Cole and his friend Smush. And you have the relationship between Cole and this horse bonding that's happening. And there's kind of a Caleb, um, Cole, and his sort of relationship to these ranch people. There's these like urban cowboy ranch people. But there's so little, they do so little to weave them together that it ends up eating a lot of time. And then it makes it where none of the plot lines get enough time. To fully develop so it's just it just feels like it's sabotaging itself at, at moments when these various plots are going on but i think that's the biggest problem with the movie at least in my opinion and why the movie when we get to the score you'll you'll see why you won't be surprised if you've been watching uh, but i do want to get into some good things i think the cinematography of this film is beautiful uh, the cinematographer was someone named minka uh farthing cole I don't know if that's a he or she, but you did a fantastic job. Uh, there's a there's a kind of thing that's been happening where if you look into the history of cinematography and lighting, lighting did not really take uh, darker skin tones into, into effect when they came with how to light dark skin. So sometimes you watch movies, especially old movies, where they don't really know how to light black actors. They either over, overly light them 
or they're underlit, but this movie really has beautiful lighting on these actors. Uh, and it, it, it kind of helps. That's why it also makes the movie a little more disappointing because the movie looks so good. I mean, it just has this rich, creamy color grade on it. it. It looks good, the colors, the shadows, and it's moody. And I just wish the script lived up to how good the movie looked. But I think this is also going to go into another problem as well, which is I think the director, I think I believe his name is Ricky Straub. I don't, this is an impressive debut, but I think he needs to work on his story a little bit because the tone of the movie is also a little off. Um, the tone of the movie, it, 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 I can't, I don't think the movie knows if it wants to be like a gritty coming of age story or if it wants to be a more fable s romantic look at this little known subculture in, in Philadelphia. But that will get into something that I do like about the film, which is this dive into this pretty much forgotten culture that's really talked about in America, which is black cowboys and black urban cowboys. Um, I think when we think about imagery of uh, cowboys in the West, you, you, for the most part, we think of you think of white people. You think of John Wayne, you think of Robert Redford and whatnot, with the cowboy hats, Clint Eastwood, a lot of white dudes, but you never really see people of color there. But if you think about that time period, there were a lot of different cultures and race there. There would definitely be black cowboys. There might have been Asian cowboys, but they don't talk about that stuff. So it was interesting to get a peek into this culture. And But now I'm going to get into something where... This is just kind of an observation I had, and if you watch a movie, maybe you'll agree with me. When you when you watch the film, right, they have it where after the credit, I mean during the credits, they have it where they have interviews with people who are among the cast who are actual Fletcher Street black cowboys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so they got the they got actual local people to be there, and I would say out of all the local cast, the local cast does a pretty solid job. I, I thought they were actors. I couldn't I couldn't really tell. But then it begged the question to me where I just went, would this movie have been better as a documentary? So you could really dive into the history of uh, black street urban cowboys and whatnot. Um, because this movie doesn't really dive too much into it because it kind of has a different narrative it's telling. But after seeing the interview with the people, I couldn't help but think, would, would this have been better as a documentary? But then I also wonder if the reason they couldn't maybe do it because it's a, it's a subject matter doesn't get a lot of attention that maybe the only way they could have brought some attention to it is by having it be a more traditional movie to build enough buzz and whatnot through having actors like Idris Elba star in it and the and the kid from Stranger Things if that's the only way the movie could have gotten made which makes it a shame that the plot is not stronger but I am glad that a movie like this could come out on an app like Netflix you know app, there's a bunch of people who use the app Netflix they did push this movie and hey maybe Maybe someone's watching this and they were really touched by the film and got to learn a little bit of unknown American history. So yeah, so I would say with Concrete Cowboys, it's a it's a solid drama that unfortunately, even though it has all this talent in it, it's not able to pull it into something cohesive and memorable. It, uh, it has little ways of self-sabotaging itself. So with that, I'm going to give Concrete Cowboys a, a solid 7 out of 10. Yeah, unfortunately, those little things that mar it keep it from being higher for me. So, hey, if you did this review, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment down below if you'd like. And, yeah, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.